So go back before the 2014 visit to Woodstock. You were here for filming and production in 92. What was that like? What was Woodstock like? Take us back to the beginning. How did it all come together? How far is the beginning? <laughs> well, okay. Let's, I was born uh, uh, a small child. All right, so do you ever have deja vu? Because you've done about a dozen TV interviews already today, and they've probably all asked you the same questions. But let's go to the beginning. Why did you write, how did you write about Groundhog Day? I, there, are, there are stories about Christmas and other things. How, why Groundhog Day? I had an idea for a movie about a, a man who repeats the same day over and over again. And that I saw it as uh, how it would work, how he would remember things, but nobody else would, how things he did did affect other people, but not the next day. And uh, I was so excited when it all came together in my head. Um, I started writing the next day, and I'm like, okay, he repeats a day, he repeats a day. Which day? Which day? You have to choose one, and that makes a big difference. Is it in a big city or small town? Is it a calendar day? Is it an anniversary of some kind that's significant to him, a birthday? Is it one of the holidays we've seen before? Um, I just had to pick one so I could start writing, and uh, I just opened the calendar. First thing I saw was Groundhog Day. I came up with the idea like at the very end of January of some year in the past, and, um, or in the future. And, uh, and uh, I had to pick a holiday, uh, something. I saw that day and I thought, ooh, that's a good idea. And I remembered I had once done a, um, I used to write for uh, corporate shows, like they'd have a big convention and there would be a, a um, you know, Saturday night banquet and then entertainment. And I was part of a comedy troupe that would perform. And, uh, we would meet with the vice presidents of the company ahead of time to write the show. Um, and they would tell us, oh yes, here's this character everybody knows, this is what the life of these people is like in our company. And I met with Bell of Pennsylvania to, for their show. Your microphone's cutting off, we're gonna trade. There you go. I... <laughs> so, uh, I did a show. <laughs> uh, did a show for Bell of Pennsylvania, and they started telling me everything that ever, they knew about everything, including you know local traditions that they were familiar with, including this Punxsutawney and Punxsutawney Phil. Uh, up until then, I, like everybody else, was vaguely aware of something called Groundhog Day that meant absolutely nothing, but it was on the calendar. And um, I remembered that thing about Punxsutawney, and I thought, oh, this could work. First of all, Groundhog Day never seen a holiday movie about that. Maybe it'll play every year. Uh, yes. I, I hadn't started writing yet, but I was thinking, yeah, yeah, so this is a good, this is good. Um, and I knew that it was a, it took place in this small town about an hour and a half outside of Pittsburgh. And I thought, well, that's perfect. If you want somebody stuck in a day that starts feeling tedious, it has to be a, a big person in a very small place. And so I thought, well, that works. And we've got the groundhog. His name is Phil. I'll call my guy Phil, too. Maybe that'll be interesting. And uh, all these ideas fell together. And then before I wrote it, I looked through the rest of the calendar to see if I had missed out on a better choice. And I went, nope, no, nope, that was it. Uh, so that's how Groundhog Day became associated with the time. So when you were writing, did you then go to Groundhog Day in Punxsutawney? No. I was too lazy. <laughs> it wouldn't have occurred to me to do that much research. And the fact could, you, could you Google it in 92? Uh, no, no, there was no, no way to do that. I went to the library. <laughs> librarians, anybody librarians? Uh, yes. Um, so I went to the library. I, I found the phone number for the Punxsutawney Chamber of Commerce. The, the day at, that this all came together was February 2nd, and I called them, and they answered the phone, Happy Groundhog Day! And I knew I had gotten it right, and this, this poor librarian um, endured about 20 minutes of my probing questions about the town, where I just tried to get a feel of what were the industries, what did people do, how big is it, how is it laid out, and she told me as best as she could, and then I just wrote it. Um, and after it sold, 
and after Harold was um, attached to, to direct it, uh, and Bill Murray was cast, and they were already building sets in Woodstock, uh, Bill said, uh, doesn't it bother you that none of us have seen the Punxsutawney Groundhog Festival? The, not the star, not the writer, not the director. Don't you think someone ought to go? Why don't you come with me? When? Tomorrow. Oh, right. Uh, and at the time, we were living in Los Angeles, my wife and uh, my two-year-old daughter and I, and we were moving to um, Santa Fe, New Mexico. And the house was stacked with boxes, and there was a lot to do. And I was always thinking at that time, what does it mean to be a responsible blah, blah, blah. Um, and I said, sorry, Bill, can't go with you, but you should go. Have a good time. And uh, he said, OK, well, if you change your mind, give me a call. So I hung up and went where Louise and one of our friends were, were packing up boxes. And they said, who was that? I said, it's Bill Murray. And that was weird already. And uh, what do you want? Well, he wants me to come with him to Punxsutawney tomorrow. And, and Louise said, well, you said yes, didn't you? And I was like, hold on. <laughs> I went back, called him back, and said, yeah, I'll go. So I got the studio to, to buy a friend of, of uh, Louise's to travel with her. Um, and make the travel easier. And I was flying off to, to Punxsutawney with Bill Murray. And uh, that's, we did some research that was useful, got a much better idea what the groundhog ceremony looked like. I, I just sort of assumed that, oh, they, wait for, they go to some field, they, they look for a groundhog, they wait for it to come. <laughs> uh, they must have some committee who runs around after it, trying to decide if he saw his shadow. And, as you can imagine, it made for a very, very funny bit, but at the same time, it did not bear any resemblance to reality, and we figured that out and changed the, the script accordingly. And then one of the nagging unsolved problems of the screenplay was that, that Harold and I were trying to fix up uh, was the third, the big final act um, scene. Um, we didn't know what it was, and Harold kept thinking maybe it was the Kleiser wedding, you know, the two kids who said they were kept avoiding getting married and then they did. Um, and uh, it wasn't quite right and I didn't love it. And uh, I was looking through a local newspaper and one of the things they had was a bachelor auction. I'd never heard of such a thing, but I thought, perfect, perfect. So we had the bachelor auction and other little rewrite things based on my post research. Um, totally justifying my choice not to do all that work ahead of time. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have to.